Some people say we're about due for a brand new internet. Now, I'm not a big fan of quoting TV shows, but you know that TV show Silicon Valley? Did you ever see it? You know how when they talk about this massive project, a new internet? Do you think you will live to see the new internet, or are we just stuck with the dark web? Today, we're going to talk about Operation Privacy. Now here on Privacy X goes without saying that privacy is one of our core mantras and privacy is a right, it's something we strongly believe in. But the government and big tech do not believe in privacy unless it's their own, but they do not believe in mine and they do not believe in yours. They use your data, your information to make billions of dollars and then they turn around and use that information against you in many different ways. There's been a lot of talk over the years on a new internet, a free internet, or a private internet. But right now we have the dark web. So can you be 100% anonymous on the deep dark web? I think they use these terms to try to connect it with nefarious activities. Now we've all heard of Silk Road. And of course, some of the stuff that was going on there was really bad. Whether it's drug use or whether it's they were selling children. Like The stuff they're doing on some of these sites is beyond bad and they definitely need to be shut down. But at what cost do we need the government knowing everything we do, these alphabet agencies knowing everything we do? And then they'll come out and say, well, if you don't have anything to hide, you really shouldn't care, right? Well, then neither should you. Why don't you put your stuff out there? Hey, okay, you first. But it never goes that way. They want gun control as long as they have armed guards around the clock. They want internet control as long as nobody can get to their information. They want privacy, anonymity, and security for themselves, just not you. They build big, giant fences and walls around their houses and mansions, just not you. Right? It's, it's not a two-way street. doesn't equal. Now, maybe we need somebody, uh, kind of a brilliant genius like Al Gore, <laughs> to recreate the Internet. Like you said, you know, he, he made big steps to help create the Internet. So maybe we, we need a modern Al Gore. <laughs> the reality is the deep web... The dark web is not a deep, dark, scary place, provided you use it properly. Now, can you be 100% anonymous? Well, let's analyze this real quick. The first thing you should look at, in my opinion, is VirtualBox. Now, on this channel, I've done a video exactly how you can set up VirtualBox, and it's not a bad option. VirtualBox gives you a virtual machine. Okay, so you can set up VirtualBox on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you got, and then you could look into setting up something like Tor. Now, the Tor project is incredible, and whether you have VirtualBox or not, you can get the Tor browser, or on the iPhone, you can get the Onion browser, which is supported by Tor, and then it's going to give you an, a level of anonymity. It's going to bounce your traffic through different nodes, ultimately an exit node, and you're going to bounce to different places. It's going to help mask some of your traffic, so a lot of people will use a VPN in Tor. Now, does that make you anonymous? No, it does not. A VPN is a tunnel. But like all tunnels, you have an entry point and an exit point. And a lot of these algorithms are really, really good nowadays. Really good. And so while you may be anonymous in a tunnel, think of it as a helicopter, okay? If you're driving a, a car, a helicopter could follow you and see everything you do. When you go in that tunnel, they can't see you, but then they'll see you come out the other side. So what's going on inside that tunnel? That's kind of the thought process. And then you use something like Tor where your traffic bounces around. Now if you use VirtualBox, and in VirtualBox, I recommend Hoonix. I think it's a great option. I showed exactly how to set that up here on this channel. So check out Privacy X Project and uh, you, can, you can see exactly how I set up Hoonix. And then you've got a gateway and a workstation. So it gives you that other added layer. So you've got your machine. So let's say you've got your computer. And then on your computer, you have VirtualBox. And then in that VirtualBox, you set up Hoonix, and you have your gateway, and then you have your workstation. That's pretty good. And then on your workstation, you use Tor. Okay, so at this point, we're making some progress. Or another option altogether is you could use Tails. Tails is a good option, or Cubes. Now, the reason Tails is really popular is because you can use a thumb drive. So similar to this thumb drive, this thumb drive actually has Tails on it. Another cool feature, this thumb drive, if you plug it in, I don't know if you can see this, but there's an on and off switch on this. If I plug this thumb drive in, it is also, you can see the little speaker on top. It is a video, not video, what am I saying? It is an audio recorder, so I can plug this in, and it looks like a thumb drive. It runs tails, but it also records audio. 
It's my little James Bond spy USB. I got all kinds of like crazy little, you know, pins with uh, cameras and all kinds of stuff. But you can run Tails or you can run Cubes. Those are another good couple good options. I know Edward Snowden talks about both of them. He's recommended both of them. This guy pretty much spends all of his time looking at privacy and security as he's exiled over in Russia currently. And it'll give you an option. It'll give you a remote OS that you can take out and it resets. And so a lot of people like that option or a lot of people like the VirtualBox Hunix option. And then when you're going through this process, figuring out what your daily driver is going to be. So do you use something like Mac OS or Windows or do you use Linux? Linux is always a good option. There's lots of different options on Linux that you can use to browse anonymously. Now, 100% in pretty much all things in the world does not exist. I don't believe you can be 100% anonymous on the internet. And it goes back to the core principles of the internet. The internet was not built with complete privacy and anonymity in mind. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of hit a wall is they're looking for this, this private and secure internet. And this is why we deal with hacking and we deal with so many issues on a regular basis because it's, it's kind of that give and take. Hackers will break into stuff, will try to make things a little stronger, better encryption, better, you know, better options to try to protect us. And then pen testers and hackers will find exploits and they'll break in and it just all kind of goes like this. Now the good thing is things get better and better and better. I mean, I think about the internet 10 years ago and the internet today, it's not even close. And where we'll be in the next 10 years. But if you're the victim of identity theft, if you're the victim of one of these issues, it's a big problem. In fact, I just did the most recent episode of the Privacy X podcast on all your favorite podcasting platforms from Apple to Spotify to Stitcher to iHeartRadio, etc. I recently just did one where I break down my experiences with identity theft, step by step, what I did, how it happened to me. And it was crazy how this happened to me. So make sure you check out the podcast down below. It's an audio only podcast. And I break down some, some ways that I got hacked personally, identity theft. It was incredible, which led me down this path over the last 10 years of, of really focusing on privacy, digital security, and how to disappear in a digital world. So these are some of the tools you can use to be anonymous. But the one thing you need to understand is VPN, Tor, all these projects at, at a certain level, they only have so much anonymity. Now used together gives you a lot of other privacy. But the other thing you need to keep in mind is a lot of the a lot of the conspiracy theorists are going to tell you, well, the CIA owns it all. The CIA owns every VPN. The CIA owns Hunix and Tor and Linux. And it's like, how do they own everything? Oh, they got teams of people and they, they, they're at the top of all these. They're just using them to spy on people. And I don't believe that at all. Do I think they've infiltrated all of this? Oh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, the, the CIA and the NSA have been able to get into most of this. But again, it comes down to what are you doing? So if you look at the dark net, you look at the wiki, you look at the different websites you can go on. There's a big difference if you go to duckduckgoes.onion or you go to some, you know, drug website or illegal uh, firearms website. There's a big difference because at the end of the day, having 100% security and doing illegal activities on the internet, don't do illegal activities. That's my piece of advice. Are you 100% anonymous? No, but it comes down to the resources somebody's willing to aim at you. So if you're creating your own version of Silk Road, then yeah, you're gonna have the FBI and the NSA and all these organizations pointed at you and their resources, something tells me, are a lot bigger than yours. But if you're just on the dark web, and, and what I feel the value of this is is strength in numbers. And kind of the whole come full circle in this video, I started off talking about a new internet. And I think because the popularity of Tor, we've started to gain strength in numbers. You know, if Tor only had 200,000 people on it, it'd be a real problem. And we'd probably all be on a list. We probably all are. But the thing with the government list, and I've talked about this before, a government list doesn't hold a lot of value if it's got 47 million people on it. Okay? Because who cares at that point? You're, what are you tracking? Uh, a quarter of the country? 20% uh, of the country? 50% of the country? That, that's not a very impressive list, right? You try to narrow down to somebody who's actually looking to do illegal activity. Most people on tour and most people are taking these steps. They just don't want people to take all their data. Data has become like the new gold rush and people are finally waking up to it. So I think strength in numbers. Do I think we'll eventually have a new internet? Yeah, I do. I definitely think the internet's gonna pivot and change. But here's the problem. We need to make sure we don't pass the ball to the government or to these foreign entities. We need to make sure that the people keep the ball. Right now, the good thing about the internet is 
there's a lot of frustrating things, but ultimately it is still mostly free. But, you know, there are some limitations to that. If we're not careful, we do not want an internet that it becomes like a government utility because that becomes a serious problem. And then it's, there, there, there's no need for back doors. It's wide open. It's wide open. So we got to watch that. But yeah, I think there'll be options. And I think that's why more people are, are pivoting to the dark net and the dark web. I talk to people all the time that over the last year have been using the deep web, that have been going on the, the dark net, that have been going on dot onion sites. And they've been treating them like regular sites. In fact, we're seeing more websites get dot onion sites because people have been like, no, I don't want to be tracked and traced everywhere I go and cataloged everything I do. So they're using, they're, they're using dot onion sites. And I think either we're gonna have a pivot in the internet or we're gonna see more people doing that, which creates a massive problem for the, uh, these companies that take all your data and use it in the name of advertising because they're not gonna be able to do that. So I think, I think the most powerful thing of the deep web or these dot onion sites is just using it for good. Because if you're using it for good and you build strength in numbers, then ultimately it becomes the norm. And if privacy and anonymity become the norm as it should have always been, then we start to solve some of these problems. But anyway, that's my take. What do you think? Do you think there's gonna be a new internet? Do you think things are gonna pivot? Do you think the dark web is gonna become more mainstream? Now, I don't think it's gonna take over you know, some of these big internet companies anytime soon, but I think over the next handful of years, we're gonna see more people wake up to the fact that they don't want their data plastered all over the internet. And they don't want everything they do to be put into a database and how important that is. Especially as we're seeing other countries do things like social credit scores. Oh, it can never happen in America. Yeah, right. A lockdown could never happen in America until it did. I couldn't believe. Personally, I was baffled that it happened for one day, let alone weeks and weeks and months. And are you kidding me? Is this even still America? That's a question for another video. But the reality is, I think strength in numbers is key and doing good things because then we show that there's, there's people who want privacy, security, and anonymity. Otherwise, if you're just willing to give all your information to big tech, big data, and big brother, then you really have no one to blame but yourself. Let me know what you think down below. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, put out new videos every single day here on Privacy X. Check out the podcast and I'll see you guys in the next video.